I won the Air Wiggles Implement Tournament 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Maxim Kokoyev. And it's unbelievable. This is the breakdown of my sound design and audio implementation. The Implement Tournament is an event held by the Air Wiggles community in September 2024, and it is all about implementing audio in an Unreal Engine 5 game made specifically for this event by the greatest John Kelleher. Big shout outs to Avishai Karwan for putting this together and to the former Air Wigglers Greg Lester and Louis Thompson. The game is fairly simple. We are in control of a spaceship, we have two speeds, normal and boost, we can maneuver around with WASD and we can shoot lasers and destroy asteroids. After spending a whole week figuring out how to do interactive flyby sounds for the asteroids, I moved on onto the engine and the thruster sounds. This is the main core of the gameplay and the players will be hearing it all the time. I had to make sure that this is satisfying, not repetitive and easy on the ears. Last thing we want is to annoy players with giant turbine noises. I looked up similar space shooters to draw inspiration from and two games really stood out to me. Everspace 2, which has this snowy like jet sound and it also has two different speeds just like our game and a little dangerous. Most of the time you're fighting or flying in empty space and that's where those sounds really give you that sense of, of feedback. Elite Dangerous excels at tonal sounds and it heavily uses tremolo throughout every layer of the engine. I wanted to have the best from both worlds. Noisy jet sounds in the low end and sci-fi tones with tremolo on the mid to high spectrum. Very cool jet sounds. Time ago I created this patch for a jet flyby sound and this was my starting point. This preset was a happy accident, which is basically the best thing ever for a sound designer to happen. Its main core is this long paper recording. We're playing a lot of short grain size from the source file while scanning through it. And the best part is this little bit of silence right here, which produces an incredibly satisfying impact. Because while scanning, it goes to silence and then bumps into sound again. Bunch of filters and time-based effects like chorus and flanger. I tweak the patch to get an impact for the moment we start boosting. I also added a kick and a noisy whoosh to fill up the higher frequencies. All of it goes into a meta sound which randomizes speech of each layer. And all of the other noise layers are basically an iteration of that very patch. This one was a different patch but using the same source. This is for the normal speed. This less grains, a little bit more of grain size and a more open sound with the cutoff here. And this is cool because we have less grains, so we can hear those little transients in the middle. And because at normal speed, the spaceship is closer to the camera, I wanted to have that feel of fire being fired, you know? And then I wanted this ever space snowy-like noisy texture. So I have this crackle in different shapes and forms. And this is just some noise with a low pass noise ring modulation on it. And then I have this more mid gliding air layer. And again, this is basically the same patch and I'm just playing with the grains and the grain size and tweaking the filters and whatnot. This macro controls a bunch of stuff like the position of the grains and filters, but the most important thing is surely the master pitch. And that's how I got different levels of intensity. Next up, we have this more like mid to high layer, more screechy. 
At this point, I thought to use shepherd tones, like that never ending rising tone. But at the end, instead, I added a flanger with this scroll function. And the scroll function basically makes it somewhat shepherd. As you can see, we have this kind of scrolling bell carving through the frequencies. So your perception is that this is like a never ending tone as well. And this gives you that feeling that you're always gaining speed. Next up, we have this one. Which I guess I needed to just reinforce those 200 hertz in the mix, right? Then we have this, which is again like a higher up layer of that previous patch. But the layer is called Shepherd Tone because I kind of tweaked the patch and what I got is this. I filtered all of the low end. And again, the flanger gives me that a uh, long shepherd tone like sound. And this was a long, long layer. I think it's like 17 seconds total. And I want it to be slow because if it's too fast, you kind of can perceive it that it's changing. But when it's slow like that, you just get lost in the gameplay and then you don't pay attention to it, but you can feel it in your gut. Like you are always gaining speed, right? The normal speed is a very stripped version of that. Just three layers here, right? Three layers and yep, that's it. And the biggest lesson I learned from this is sometimes less is more. Because at the beginning, I was exporting all of the sounds mono and placing them in 3D world. And soon enough, I understood that I lacked that stereo feel and it wasn't that satisfying for me. So I got these turbine sweeteners that are positioned to the far left, to the far right. And the sweeteners had like two different layers I had to mix for two different speeds. And this is the first boosting loop. I had like three different layers and it was too difficult for me. So at the end, I just decided to have my turbine sounds as 2D source and make my mix and design decisions all inside Reaper. And that way I could iterate way more quickly on the sound. Next, let's see the tonal layers for the engine. When I started to prototype tonal layers, I started to use tremolo from the get-go. This is what I've got here. This is the normal speed and then the boosting speed. Idling, very similar to what we got before, but this is the wood on wood sliding rotating texture that I recorded. We're modulating pitch and we have this tremolo effect with this game module. When I exported these sounds, I didn't include this because I wanted to control it in Unreal Engine 5. And we will see how I did that in a moment. And this expands on our perception of speed. I wanted the spaceship to feel fast. And the closest we know as human beings to being fast is just air passing by when we are in the car and you know, it's like shh, like that. Three different speeds, idling, normal speed, and then boosting. Then there is the mid layer. Again, this is a granular preset. We have pitch modulation, some tremolo, and lastly, we have this layer. Which sounds a bit like a helicopter. This is a burpee waveform with some FM. And what is doing the heavy lifting here is this multipass preset underwater from the Polychrome content pack. This particular layer was exported with tremolo and then I just adjusted the pitch of this sound file inside Unreal. And also I used the same patch to make this screechy sound for maneuvering when you are boosting. And that's because I wanted to give that feeling when you're drifting with your cars, you're screeching with your tires. I also controlled tremolo inside Unreal for that. Just of all the dynamics, really satisfying to listen to and play. This is my Unreal Engine spaceship blueprint. And I know it could be more organized, but I was like in between of prototyping and shipping all the time until the end of the project. So this is what we are working with.
it seems a lot of stuff, but all of this isn't that crazy. What I wanted to show you here is the tonal layers and the tremolo effects. Okay, our speed sense float parameters to a bunch of tonal layers. And because I wanted to have that movement in the tremolo, I wanted to change the speed of the tremolo. Like the first time I had a timeline and I had a curve that says, hey, go from zero to whatever hertz I want the tremolo to be and then go back. And soon I realized that this is too much. I cannot be controlling that in this way. So what I did is I controlled everything with envelopes. <laughs> Tonal two layer, we have the main sound and its envelope. We have the control of the pitch and we have the tremolo. Starting with the speed, we have this map range that rescales from zero to 25 thousandths which is the max speed of the spaceship and it rescales it to go from zero to seven. Basically what it's saying is that when we have zero speed the sound will be playing at normal pitch. When we are at max speed it will be seven semitones up. And then we have additional controls like tone trick. Tone trick is triggered every time we uh, start moving, we start boosting, we stop boosting, we stop moving. Basically the same for turning as well. And what tone trick does, changing the pitch at the moment we hit that trigger and it kind of goes down or up depending on this random boolean right here. And at the end it goes into a multiplier of our initial speed map range. In the end I changed it minus 7 to 0 but that's another story. And for the tremolo I had the same approach. I have this tone trick which basically triggers this envelope uh, which tells this LFO to go from 0 to 90 Hertz. And this LFO is controlling volume. But then I also wanted to have like a tremolo for when we are idling at a certain speed. So I tied a speed to another tremolo and put it afterwards. But now we have another problem. We cannot have both of these tremolos working at the same time. I created an active tremolo control, which is just an envelope. It goes from zero to one whenever we are triggering a tone trick. And then we just map the range of the mean value of this LFO. When the tone trick tremolo is working, the mean value will be one. So there is no volume change coming from this tremolo. And then it goes back when we trigger this release, uh, which is triggered when the time is out. Here at the top we have a volume control, which whenever we trigger tone trig, we need to have that bump in the volume, basically saying, hey, uh, listen to me, I'm doing something. Because otherwise it would be just all of the same volume and it would be lost in the mix. So you kind of can't perceive that something is changing. The same goes from for collided logic and the collided volume control as well. And at the end we have just some filtering. And the same approach goes for every other tonal layer. Next up we have asteroid explosions and how fun is that? I'm making everything sound beefy. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's really... You can go ahead. A sweeter, which is basically just a useless layer here. In the tag we have a kick, another kick, then we have a suction, then we have another kick with like a sweetener. And this distal body is again this long paper recording and we are modulating this 3 band EQ like crazy. It's such a random preset that I have to kind of sit there and try different notes and hope for the best to get that multi-transient distorted stuff. And another one is this to body high. Very similar patch, but instead I have this heavy tutti correctly paper. Some cool sounds in there. In the low end we have this main impact with the tail. Guess what? This is... <laughs> this is the same long paper recording. Then we have like a low, low rumble. 
just a triangle wave being frequency modulated and then filtered afterwards. With that, we have some tail. Nice movement. And this is always <laughs> the same recording. And then some rocks. And this is basically all the layers I needed. I needed the attack, I needed the body, and I needed the rock debris. Right, back in our Unreal Engine, we have Metasound Explosion. Here I added attenuation interface, and this gives me this distance parameter. And the distance parameter is tied to the volume. Higher the distance, lower the volume of the attack. Whenever we are above 40,000 units, we have to go down from 1.5 volume to zero. The body and tail layer is being filtered when we are above 50,000. And the rocks basically are playing only when we are really close to the asteroid. But then I felt like it needed some of that mid to high presence in the explosion. So I added this filtered noise layer and basically we're randomizing a bunch of envelopes and the cutoff frequency in our low pass. A hard clip for a good measure and again the distance value rescales the volume. An interesting thing is that I added a delay to the explosion. This is how it sounds without the delay. And this is with delay. Like that second explosion way of coming to you, right? That's quite neat. But you kind of get a tutorial at the start, all kinds of voice cues for everything. It's so dynamic. Birdie, listen up. We've got an asteroid field coming up fast. Watch out. Trying, dude. <laughs> the voice lines obviously I started with writing and I looked up a lot of military jargon and military slang to incorporate in my writing. I wrote all of the uh, possible voice lines I would need. Then I recorded all of my voice lines. Spacebar moves you forward. WASD. Then I ran it through Voice Changer in 11 Labs. I used 11 Labs in a lot of commercial projects as well. Uh, so maybe clients don't want to spend uh, too much on the voice over hiring talents. So I can just say, okay, uh, just to let you know, we can do voice as well, but it's gonna be AI generated. So I uploaded my voice here. I found a nice Italian New York style Tony voice and you just hit generate voice. Bullseye! And for the voice changer, the similarity is very important. When it's on high, it will be more similar to what you give to the voice changer. So it will have my intonation, but Tony's voice. <laughs> so this is what I've got from Eleven Labs. Charlie is waiting for you near the star, hurry up. Pitched it down a little bit and added some radio effects on it. Are you FK or something? Move on. Use spacebar, WSD, and shaft. And that's basically it. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope I inspired you to make things better than me. <laughs> I hope you cringe so much for my blueprint organization and like use of nodes and you're like, I can do better. Do that, do better. And in the end, I wanted to say a big thank you to Air Wiggles and to the whole community. I'm not sure if there's any other design and art profession that has a community like Air Wiggles. They are making all of these challenges, bringing sound designers out of their comfort zone. And this is really what we need. Just go out there and make stuff do better, have a healthy competition with others, push your limits. Thank you, thank you, thank you.